Hebrews chapter 12. Please turn there. I'm going to share uh, this morning on a subject that the Lord's been stirring in my spirit for a few weeks now. I almost shared it last week, but boy, I know the Lord had me share the lies the devil's told me last week. And I, I believe we've gotten so many requests for that CD. We're going to get several of those, uh, have them ready for you next week. And, uh, but uh, this subject today that I'm going to be sharing on, ladies and gentlemen, this thing will destroy your life if you let it. It will destroy your family. It will destroy your finances. It will destroy everything that you hold dear. <clears throat> and this thing I'm talking about is bitterness. Um, I know that many feel like that they're entitled to be bitter. You're not. And today, I'm just praying that the Holy Spirit help me deliver this in a way that you see the poisonous destructive devil that bitterness can and will be in your life if you let it. Now, let's read our scriptures first. Hebrews chapter 12. And we're going to start with verse number 14. I love my glasses. There they are. I, I don't really need these. They just look good on me. Hebrews chapter 12. Verse 14. Pursue peace with all men and holiness without which no one will see the Lord. Looking diligently, lest anyone fall short of the grace of God, and lest any root of bitterness springing up cause trouble, and by this many become defiled. Now, I've got a picture. Uh, put up that slide, Dave. <clears throat> Can you all see this tree? I saw this picture a couple of days ago, and I'm like, I have got to use this picture. And really, I titled this, What is Your Root System Like? How many of you know that we all have a root system in our life of something? And I saw this picture. Now, of course, we've got this tree, but will you look at the roots that this tree is producing? How far they're spreading out. How thick they are you'd have to take a chainsaw to these roots. I mean, to just get them up. There was a, <clears throat> there was a, uh, a place over in Gallatin when we had our church over there on uh, Main Street. And now, they, they're over here now, I guess, in Hendersonville. Again. The Chocolate-Covered Strawberry is the name of the uh, restaurant. But they used to be in Gallatin right down from our old church. And they had a tree out in the front yard of this place beautiful. It was just one of these big old southern looking trees, you know. And I was talking to the owner one day of that property and I said, boy, that is some kind of tree and it's like a historical tree now. You can't touch it. Whatever. All that stuff. And they began to tell me that the roots went underneath Main Street, underneath the Food for Less store over there, all the way down to the bank. These roots spread out a good quarter of a mile. It was unbelievable. When I begin to see this picture and think about that root system, I begin to think about this scripture again, went back and read it. Now church, look at verse 15 one more time. Looking diligently, lest anyone fall short of the grace of God, and lest any root of bitterness springing up cause you trouble. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to hear me today. This is vital. That when a person becomes offended, when they become hurt, and they don't deal with that offense correctly, come on. That bitterness will churn in you so long that it will become a root of bitterness. You won't be able to just trim the treetop of that thing. You won't just be able to just, you know, trim it up and make it look good. This thing becomes planted. It becomes firmly fixed. I'm going to show you something here in just a minute in this that was so powerful. Uh, looking diligently. Church, we've got to search our heart. 
I have deceived myself before, and I've even told you a couple of stories before, of how I deceived myself thinking that that root of bitterness was not in me until the person's name was mentioned and I wanted to go kill them. Come on. And what that does is it begins to show me, uh uh-oh, I hadn't surrendered something. And something's trying to grow on the inside of me. Amen? The Living Bible says, Watch out that no poisonous root of bitterness grow up to cause you trouble. My Lord. So I want us to see that it is vital today to become free from that root of bitterness. Now, I can hear you right now. Pastor, you don't know what they did to me. You don't know what they said about me. (laughs) You know, i got to tell you, pastoring uh, this church over the past ten years, um, we've had the opportunity to surrender a lot of bitter thoughts. Because people talk about you. They hate you. Let me tell you something. Somebody said one time that if they're kicking you, it means you're out front. I kind of like that. Pastor, you don't know what they did to me. You don't know what they said. I can never forgive them. Mm. Well, let me tell you something today, and you might not like it. You don't have a choice. Oh, I got a choice. I can do anything I wanted to. And, well, you won't be free. You won't be free. You will live in bondage. You will live in pain. You will have no peace. And the spirit of joy will not reside in you because you've refused to surrender this thing. Now let me tell you something, church. Many of you know this. You know that the Word tells us in Matthew 6 that if you don't forgive, you won't be forgiven. I don't know if we just blow through that thinking it ain't true, but it's true. And... Not only will that happen, but this root of bitterness is going to grow in you like a cancer. I mean, look at this. If you just compare this natural to what's going on on the inside of a lot of people, this is a cancer. This thing will kill you. And let me tell you something. You can't put a Band-Aid on that. You can't put a gauze pad on that and act like it's gone away. That's going to have to be cut out. And there are some people in the church, I don't know any in this church, but there are some people in the church, there's going to have to be some Holy Ghost operation go on. And the fire of the Holy Ghost is going to have to burn that thing out. But it can happen because it was burned out of me. Praise God. I walk around free today. I'm perfect. Let me show you all something. Now, up there in Hebrews 12 where we read, and I'm going to get real, uh, uh, real analytical with you today. I've got two Greek words. Oh, yeah. That I'm going to bring out today. Are y'all ready? I'm going to get so theologically deep, you ain't even going to be able to understand it. That's not true. I have been in service. How many of you have ever been in those services with those preachers? And they get into the Greek. I'm like, I guess I should have stayed home. I ain't getting none of this, you know. But let me bring out a couple of things for you today. The word root in that Hebrews 12 that we just read is the Greek word rizzo. It's R-I-D-Z-O. Now, that word means literally in the original translation something that is established and firmly fixed. How many of you have ever met somebody that they are established and firmly fixed in their attitude and you ain't going to change them no matter what? (laughs) They're firmly fixed. There has become a root, a rizzo of bitterness that has planted itself deep. And honey, you can't change them. There are roots that have gone so deep and are deeply embedded, and now they're firmly fixed and established. Um, (laughs) You know... Now, I'm going to say, okay, I'll say it. I'm going to say it. Sometimes I think things through now. Not much, but sometimes. Have you ever heard somebody say something like this? Well, it's just the way I am. I don't care what people think about me. Come on. 
You ever heard that? Aren't those joyful people to be around? This is just how God made me. I've heard that jump. Can I tell you? No, He didn't. No, He did not. The Word of God says we're made in His likeness and His image. Can I tell you, there is no form of bitterness in Him. And if you're walking around saying, this is just how God made me, get over it. Come on now. He didn't make you that way. But listen to me. Firmly fixed. Put that slide back up. Now I want you to see this. Established and firmly fixed. Now church, get this. When your thoughts of another person are rooted in bitterness, your judgment of that person will become rationalized and established. You say, what are you talking about? It becomes so firmly fixed inside of you that stuff you're thinking about them will actually start making sense. You ever thought how somebody could premeditate murder? I have. Because, I mean, I know that... I mean, there's been times... I've, back in the day, I've thought the world would be better off if they weren't around, you know. But, but to actually go kill them... I, I mean... You have at that point, you got a firmly fixed and established root system. Uh, you know, we saw it in this church. Um, how long ago? Five years? Five or six years ago. Laura Shatswell. She was our children's ministry director at the fireplace. We have some great ones now, but I've just got to tell you, that nobody ever did a greater job in our children's ministry than she did. This woman loved the children. She was there. She was a jewel. And one night, me and Shanda got the call. Hurry, come, quickly. Her daughter was calling because she was in the closet because Dad just killed her. Now, Dad was in our men's meeting just about every week. He, he baked banana nut bread for the men. It was good. Yeah, he would come pray, walk around the church speaking in tongues and pray. Hear me? And we pull up at that crime scene, and there's our children's director laying on the ground with eight, nine millimeter bullets in the back of her head. Dead. A firmly fixed, married 27 years. A firmly fixed and established root system had grown up on the inside of that man. Can I tell you, church, that you can shout all day long and you can show up at church on Sunday and smile your way through praise and worship. You ain't hearing me. But you better get this junk out of your life or it's going to grow up to cause you trouble. The Word of God will not lie. And just because you can shout and praise, oh Lord, help me. I believe in shouting. I believe in praising. I've worshipped my way out of all kinds of junk. Okay? But when your thoughts of another person have become, eh, they were having marriage problems. Always had this, that, all kinds of little stuff. How many of you know little foxes? Little stuff. If you don't deal with them correctly, will grow up to cause you trouble, church. This is so vital to this church. It's so vital to your life. You need to hear what I'm saying. Because you don't need to drag that mess into 2015. We're going to be free today. 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 In the name of Jesus. I, uh, You know, one night, I was thinking about this last night. Me and Shanda were... Uh, this has been, oh man, a couple of years ago now. We were watching, I don't know if it was 2020 or Dateline, one of those news shows. And there was this, the, the show was on hell. That was what the show was on, so I stopped. I'm like, well, I wonder what they're going to say. You know? 
And there was this young man on there, 16 years old, 16. He's in prison for several life sentences because he killed his parents. Now they showed this boy singing in the choir. They showed this boy at church all the time. He was in church. And as we're watching this boy, I could see a possession of bitterness. That's the best way I can describe what I saw when I was watching him. And what had happened is that bitterness, wherever it started, ever how it started, I don't remember. He was telling about church and, and no telling what happened. But this root of bitterness had grown up in him at 16, had already sprouted and grown up in him so much that he takes a 12-gauge and blows his parents' heads off during the night. And his life is destroyed. And the enemy got a hold of his life somehow, some way. I believe if he's here today, he'd be set free. But church, you need to put this thing to work in your life. Who is it you're mad at? Who is it you're bitter at? Who is it that hurt you when you were a child? Should have never been done to you. Should have never been done to you. But you better surrender it. Put it under the blood. Leave it there. And get on with what God's got for you today. Jesus help us. Because you don't want that. You do not want that. Wow. Oh, Father. All right. Let me move on with this. Um, Now, here's my second Greek word, and then I'll probably start closing. Okay? Y'all got me so freaked out about when I say I'm closing that I don't ever think I'm going to say it again. Thank you, Padrian. I appreciate that. All right. So we've got root, and then here is the Greek word for bitterness, akria. Now look, look at this. That word literally means an inward attitude that is so bitter it produces a physical change. That's amazing. You ever seen a bitter person? They just kind of walk around like this. They they, they almost dare you to talk to them. They they almost dare you to just say anything to them because they're sitting on go to rip your head off. Huh? An inward attitude so bitter it produces a physical change. I have seen people that are so bitter that it is eating away at their health. I've seen people that have fibromyalgia. They can't find a physical reason for it. I know why they got it. Because they hate everybody they come in contact with. Everybody's done them wrong. Everybody. Every family member. They hate everybody because everybody's hurt them. Get over it. Get over it, my Lord. Grow up. You watching today, family member by internet, get over it. Lord, have mercy. Nobody wants to be around that. I knew a man. (laughs) Yeah, I'll say this too. I knew a man several years ago that about 60 years old at the time. And this guy, you didn't pet him enough. Uh, he'd just get mad. Um, if you didn't just say the right thing, he'd just soul up. Like a two-year-old. And he really, I, I really believe this guy. And he, you know what? He's lived a pretty miserable life. And this guy really thought he should get petted for breathing. Pretty much. You know, I'm here. What? I know. It's, I'm sorry, Dad, but the Lord wanted me to share your story today. <laughs> but this guy, honestly, it was like, look, man, you don't get a reward for breathing. I mean, we all breathe, you know? Get over yourself and stop pouting. 
I don't know how I got off on that. Oh, inward attitude. Okay, that's what I'm talking about. An inward attitude that produces a physical change. And this guy, you, 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 if he's coming, you're like, oh, oh, my Lord. I mean, this is going to be miserable. Because just his presence entering the room, it just brought everything down, you know? I'm venting a little bit today. It feels good. I ain't bitter, tell you that. <laughs> you know, some, somebody said something one time, and this, this is something for all of us to remember on that line. Hear me. Your rewards in life are not determined by... Uh, no. Your rewards in life are determined by the problems you solve for others. Now, now get that. Your rewards in life... You don't get rewarded for breathing. But your rewards in life are determined by the problems you solve for others. What do you mean? If my car's broke down out here in this parking lot in the rain and it won't start, I don't care if you're a doctor, a lawyer, or who, guess who's my favorite friend that day? The mechanic that's sitting in this room. Because he can solve that problem for me. You, you get it? If, you, if you're hurting in your body today and there is a doctor here and well, the mechanic you don't care about, but the doc, he's, he's going to be able to solve a problem for you. Guess who's going to get reward? Come on. And so get over yourself. Get over yourself. We are all here to serve. You know, I was talking to me and Dave and Jeff have our morning meeting in my office. We were just talking about the joy of serving. How so many people could be healed. I'll tell you what started it. I told them we, this, this past week because of the break and Christmas and everything. I mean, there's been a couple. I've gotten up at 10 a.m. I mean, it's like, my Lord. I mean, we get, I mean, we get up early, Normie. I'm up at 5, 5.30. So sleeping at 9.30 or 10. And then I'm up till 3 because I can't sleep, you know. But... We were talking about, and I heard a guy say this week, retirement ain't all it's cracked up to be. He said, because I don't have nothing to do. Okay. I kind of related to that as I was laying around eating C's candy all week. That part was fun. But we were talking, well, what would solve that guy's problem? Why don't you get up and go serve somebody that? Go down to Nashville Rescue Mission. Go down to Bridge Ministry and say, look, I don't know what to do, but I'm here. They'll put you to work. We'll put you to work. Serving. There's power in serving. You will come out of your bitterness. You'll come out of your depression. You will come out of yourself when you serve somebody else. It's powerful, church. Amen? Oh, well, if you're not getting anything, I am. And so I'm enjoying this myself. Now, you say... I'm, Okay, y'all ready? I am closing. I really am. Here we go. Um, I ask you the question, but I want you to really think about this. Who is it that you're bitter against? Where is that bitterness coming from? Hear me. Every time you think of that person, you kind of get that little scowl on your face or that little, you know, kind of attitude. You might not be free from them if if you're still doing that. And if you're playing around with that, that's where a root comes from. Amen? Now, if you find yourself constantly saying negative things about somebody that's offended you or that has hurt you, upset you in the past, it may be that that root of bitterness is trying to grow on the inside of you. And if that thing grows up, it will cause you trouble what the Word says. So you say, okay. Well, Pastor, I think I can think of a couple of people right now that I'm bitter against. And, and let me say something on that. <clears throat> you know, I hear this whole thing. Well, Christians aren't supposed to be mad at anybody. Well, aren't you? I, I've had this before, you know. Well, aren't you a preacher? You're not supposed to be mad at anybody or be hurt. You going to make me bitter by saying that. You know. <laughs> Let me say church that just because 
you've been free of somebody and you're not bitter anymore don't mean you've got to hang out with them all the time. You don't have to go to dinner with them every week. There are some people you might have to love from a distance. Come on now. Get, get a hold of that. Because you can be condemned if you're not careful. And you've got to accept everybody into your home. No, you don't. No, you don't. Use wisdom. That's kind of another message. But you say, okay, I think of a couple of people right now. How do I get rid of it? There's the question. How do I get rid of it? Well, let me tell you how. And this is what I kind of had to do. And I don't have one up here. Uh, but in the natural, because we see in the natural up here what bitterness can do and how it can grow. But if I had a live plant up here, in a, a, a basket or a pot or whatever, I'd have to take to kill that thing. I'd have to take that thing by that, that stalk rip it out of that uh, planter and get the roots and all. And then what I'm going to have to do is lay that thing aside and let it die. How many of you know it's going to stay alive for a little bit because that, those roots are still feeding it. But you let it lay over there for a little bit, it's going to die. What many do is they replant it, nurture it, water it, and watch it grow again. The church, through the Holy Spirit, and I believe it's only through Him, can we be free of some of these things. I do believe that a lot of things are our choice, and we can just, I'm done with it, not going to do it anymore, and I mean, I've been there, done that. But things like this that have grown like that, you're going to have to rip it out by the root and let it die. And you're going to have to surrender that hurt to the Lord. You're going to have to lay it down at the foot of the cross. See him, see him hanging on that tree. What he did for you. You know, it wasn't just for salvation and it wasn't just for healing. It was for the root of bitterness to be destroyed. It was for peace. It was for joy. Everything was accomplished at Calvary. And so today, you're going to have to make a choice. Now here we go. And I want you to get this. And I quote this a lot. But Deuteronomy tells us today. Somebody say today. So when is today? Right now. Today, I've set before you a choice. This is what Deuteronomy says. I've set before you a choice. Life or death. Okay? I've set before you today a choice. Bitterness or peace? I have set before you today a choice. Bitterness or joy? Choose life. Why? So that you and your descendants might live. That's what your Bible says. It is not just about you not hating them anymore. It is about you and your kids and your grandkids and your cousins and your, your descendants. Now church, hear me. Parents, hear me. Grandparents, hear me. Get this thing ripped out of your life today and watch your family flourish. You won't take it into their future. It's your responsibility. You know, I could hate everybody that's ever said anything bad about us. And guess what my kids are going to do? They're going to hate them too. If we sat around the kitchen table and talked about everybody and everybody's hurt us and everybody's done us wrong, guess what my kids are going to do? Church, this is our decision. Now, it's time to make the right choice. There's how you can be delivered. By starting to make the right choice today. Hmm. All right. Shall I say it? I'm close. You know, I've, have, I've had a couple of people say this, and I, I want to share. Listen, well, I'm just going to cut people out of my life, and then everything will be okay. 
If people didn't exist, I've had pastors tell me, if it wasn't for people, I'd be happy. I'm like, you're a jerk. Stop pastoring. Uh, this is a people business. Okay? I mean, come on, man. You're an idiot. If people weren't in my life, everything would be okay. Somebody said one time that when God wants to bless you, He puts a person in your life. When the devil wants to destroy you, he puts a person in your life. Think about it. You say, well, how am I supposed to know? Through discernment, through the Holy Spirit, and through prayer. And You might need to get to know your father a little bit. Let him speak to you about some things. But let me help you with that. You say, well, I don't know who to trust. I don't know who to have in my life then. There's two kinds of people. This is so easy. One is either bringing you closer to the Lord and one is either taking you further away from Him. That's it. Now, you need to reevaluate who's bringing you closer to God and who every time you're with them takes you further away from Him. That might be the one you need to love from a distance. Come on. Think about it. So, I want you today to release these people that have hurt you this bitterness that is set up on the inside of you I want you to lay this stuff at the foot of the cross today we're not dragging it into a new season we're not going to drag it into a new year I want to tell you that I need as your pastor a healed body I need as your pastor the fireplace fellowship, people that attend this church and call this their home, I need them on fire because we got some stuff to do and we can't help heal anybody if we're hurting worse than they are. So today is a day to surrender. Today is a day to say, I'm choosing life, not death. You say, okay, well, I've done that, but then it kind of crops back up. Then kill it again and get on with what God's got for you. Like I said, even though you might rip that root up, it'll live for a little while, but it's eventually going to die. Praise God. And can I tell you, you just breathe better when you're not weighted down with all that stuff. You just, oh, you know, amen.